Made It Mondays with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft y'all! Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these bamboo cutting boards that I got from the Dollar Tree. If you don't have one of these boards, you could use a scrap piece of wood or you could use one of the signs from the Dollar Tree. Some wood beads from Hobby Lobby, a skewer from the Dollar Tree, a gold glitter glue stick from the Dollar Tree, this printable that I designed and took to Staples to have printed out, I will put a link to this down in the description box below if you would like to have a copy, some chalk paint, Mod Podge, a glue gun, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint my cutting board. I did end up using two coats of the Waverly White Chalk Paint. Um, with one coat, you could still see the bamboo through it, so I went ahead and gave it two coats. I paint the front, the back, and all the sides. Now, ignore those tumbling tower blocks over there. I thought I was going to use them to make a stand for this, but no matter what I did, this thing was not going to stand up with those. So I decided to just make it as a leaner and to put a hanger on it so it can be hung if I want to. Now I'm going to take the printable and I just lay it on my board and kind of press around it so that I have an idea of where my lines are and how big I need this to be. Then I take some water and a paintbrush and I just paint down my lines. And once I get it good and wet, I start tearing it. I love the effect this has. It gives you those wispy edges. And for this project, I really didn't want those harsh cut lines. Now, if you don't like this, you can totally cut yours. But this was the method that I chose to use for mine. Once you have your piece ready, you take your Mod Podge and you put a generous coat onto your board. Now, I did put too much on here, so you see I'm going to use my brush and take a lot of it back off. While you do want a good coat, you don't want too much. If it puddles up, it's actually going to cause you to have bubbles and wrinkles in your design. Now I'm going to take a water misting bottle and I just mist the back of my print and then press it down onto my board. And then I put some saran wrap over it to protect it and I use my bone folder and smooth out all the wrinkles and the bubbles. If you don't have the saran wrap there, it can tear your paper. Once that's completely dry, I take my Mod Podge and my brush and I put another light coat over the top of this. I didn't go too heavy with it. I kept it light, but I did want to make sure that my project was protected. Now I'm going to take a piece of twine and make a hanger for this. I just tie a knot in it, leaving a loop at the top, and then I trim off the end and I attach it to my board with some hot glue. Now I'm just going to take a piece of paper tape and cover over the top of that and this just gives it extra strength so it don't pull off. Now I'm going to use my chalk paint and go over my paper tape and this blends it into my project and gives me a more finished back. I wanted one of the honey dippers for this project, but I could not find any at my local stores and they were like six to $10 online. So I decided I'd make my own. I went to Hobby Lobby and got some of these beads. They're actually called beehive beads. And then I just put some hot glue into the little hole, stick a skewer in there. This is just one of the regular skewers from the Dollar Tree and let it set. Now I'm going to cut it off and then I'll use my sandpaper to smooth it out and voila, I have a honey dipper. I'm going to attach it to the top of my project and this is where that glitter glue stick is going to come in. I love these. The Dollar Tree had them in a pack with all different colors and I think this gold actually looks like honey. So I put a dab on there and stick my honey dipper into it and then I put another little dab on the other end just to hold it in place 
and then once that's set I'm going to take that glue gun and I'm just going to cover the end of my honey dipper with this glue and then I put it onto my project and make it look like that it's dripping down on here y'all I love the effect this has it really looks like honey dripping down onto my project and there's our finished project y'all i love this one so much this is probably one of my favorite projects that i have ever made and i will be keeping it out all year round even though it has a definite summer vibe to it thank you for stopping by our channel today if you are new here we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this Gatorade bottle that I rescued from my trash, a mop strand that I had left over from making gnome beards, a hat from the Dollar Tree, some sunflowers from Hobby Lobby. I got them when they were 50% off, some bee stickers from Hobby Lobby, some Waverly chalk paint, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my chalk paint and paint the lid of this Gatorade bottle. I will be covering it up, but my trim has little holes in it and I was afraid that this bright orange would show through it. So I just gave it a good coat of the paint. Now I'm going to take this strand from the mop head. Y'all know I used these back in the winter when I was making gnomes and I'm going to fill the ditch of this bottle with it. I just put down some hot glue and stick it right down in there. If you don't have one of these, you could use anything. Now I'm going to take my hat and if you clip this little clear thread right there, it unravels and it gives you a strand of trim. I love how this looks. It has that braided boho look to it and I love using it for all kinds of projects. For this one, we are going to be making a bee skeep. So I just take my hot glue and I go around my bottle and then I wrap it with my trim. I keep going around and around. When I get back to the next section, I just kind of bump it up a little bit and go on up. Now, when I get to this area where it has these divots in it, I just put my hot glue on the raised areas and on the top part of the bottom strand of the ribbon, and then I just keep wrapping. It sticks to itself and it doesn't go down into those holes. Now, you guys probably saw me use this trick um, with the hat in our video that we did Saturday for the scavenger hunt. If you miss that, I'll put a card up in the corner there. You might want to check that out. You'll have a chance to win a Cricut Joy with that video. Um, I love doing this and several of you commented that you couldn't get these hats at your Dollar Trees. If you can't get them there, check your thrift stores. I've picked up several from the thrift store and the quality is actually normally better than the ones at the Dollar Tree. As a matter of fact, I think the one I'm using here was from the thrift store and it really was a nice thick braid. I really like this one. So as you can see, I'm just keep going up my bottle until I get to the top of it. And then I'm gonna put my lid back on and continue wrapping and cover that as well. Now my camera cut off and I did lose um, the footage of where I finished this, but I'm literally just putting the lid on this and covering it completely up. Now to make the opening for our bees, I took a permanent marker and started coloring in a circle there on the front of my bottle, but it didn't cover really well. So I ended up grabbing my black chalk paint and filled this in and that worked perfectly. Now you can still use that permanent marker. You just have to have more patience than what I have to get it to cover. 
Now I'm gonna take another piece of that trim and I'm just going to glue it in half. I want a thinner piece to go around the opening of my beehive. So I just keep gluing it down and pushing it together until I get a piece that's long enough to fit around. Now we're just going to take our hot glue and we are going to glue this piece right around our opening. And this just kind of finishes it up and it gives it that bumped out look that most of these bee skeeps have. Now I want to take my sunflowers and decorate my bee skeep. Now, you can use any flowers you want. I am just in love with sunflowers this year. They have such a happy look to them, and I am enjoying using them in a lot of my decor. I just took the flowers off of the stem, and I cut some of my leaves off as well, and then I just put them in a pattern up my bottle. I kind of curled them up from the bottom up, but you do whatever looks good to you. I did clip the back off of them so that they would lay flat and then I used some hot glue to stick them down with. Once I got my flowers down, I went back and just kind of tucked some of the leaves in behind them and in between them just to kind of fill it in and give it more of a summery look. Now I'm going to take those stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to put two of them on my skeep. They are sticky, but I went ahead and put a little drop of hot glue on there because I didn't trust them to stay. I put one at the opening and one up on the skeep. And there's our finished project. I love how this turned out. I know everybody has done the bee skeeps, but this was my first one and I absolutely love it. I think my little bees look so cute and the sunflowers just dress it up perfectly. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use two scrap pieces of one by two that I had in my wood pile. They're about 10 and a half inches long and they are beat up, but that's okay. They work perfectly for this project. Some twine, a bee sticker from Hobby Lobby, this picture that I printed from the computer, some chalk paint and some acrylic paint, my drill, my glue gun, and some tools from my work caddy. While I was in Hobby Lobby this week, I saw this adorable Bee Sweet and Bumble sign that they had in there. They had a lot of the bee decor out for the summer and I just fell in love with this one. I thought it was so cute and I knew right away that I had to make my own version of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some scrap lumber that I had in my wood pile and I'm going to give it a good coat of paint. I'm using Waverly chalk paint and I will be giving it a coat and a half which just means that I cover it and then do some touch up on it. Now you can get these one by two pieces at Home Depot for like two dollars and it's eight foot long. You can make lots of projects out of it. I have these left over from other projects and they are beat up but it kind of works for this project. Once my paint is dry, I go in with my ruler and I mark a half an inch in and then I take my drill and I drill through both ends of this one piece of wood. You don't have to do it on the second piece, only on the one piece. 
Now I'm going to take this picture and I cut off the honeycomb part of this and I scribbled on the back of it with my pencil just like we did when we were kids and I traced part of it onto the end of my pieces of wood. Now you don't want the whole pattern, you just want a little part of it. You see that once I got it on here, I took my pencil and went around and kind of darkened up my lines and then I took my yellow acrylic paint and I just kind of paint at it. I don't want it to be solid. I just want it to give the hint of a honeycomb. So I painted around it as well. Now I'm going to take the wording and cut that out and use it as well. This is actually the picture that I took at Hobby Lobby. I just kind of blew it up so that it would fit my wood and printed it out. I love the font that they used on this and I didn't think that I would find anything similar to it so I decided to just use the real thing. I will put a link to this picture down below if you would like it so that you can print it out and it also has that honeycomb piece on it too. Now to transfer the wording to my wood I'm just using a piece of carbon paper. I love using this method but if you don't have any carbon paper you can do the same thing with this that we did with the honeycomb. Just flip your paper over, scribble on the back of it with your pencil and then trace over your letters and it will transfer it to your project. Once I get my letters onto my project, I take my graphic illustration markers that I get from Hobby Lobby and I fill them in. Now for this one, I'm using the one with the brush tip. I really love these markers, y'all know I do. But if you don't have any of these, you can use the permanent markers from Jot that they have at Dollar Tree or you can use a Sharpie and get the same look. Now on the picture at Hobby Lobby, you see that it looked handwritten. It wasn't perfect, it was kind of sloppy, and I wanted this to have the same look. So you can tell that I just kind of swiped at it and went around and I did not try to make it perfect at all. I wanted it to look a lot like the cute little picture at Hobby Lobby. Now we're going to take one of our little bee stickers from Hobby Lobby. We're going to put a little bit of glue on it and then stick it right there to the bee in our bee suite. Now I'm going to take some twine and I take a large darning needle and run my twine through it and pull it through the hole there. And then I'm going to tie a triple knot in the end so that it doesn't slip back out. And I will trim off that end there. Then I just put a little dot of hot glue there to hold it in place as well. Now I'll measure it across my sign and clip that off and then I put it back into my darning needle and run it through the hole there and I'm going to tie another triple knot in the end and trim that off. Now if you don't have one of these large darning needles, y'all they are great when you're working with twine, but you can put some tape on the end of your twine and pull it through the hole as well. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to cut two more pieces of twine, one and a half inches long. And then I'm just going to use some hot glue and attach the top to one piece and the bottom to the other. Now notice that I've got them laying right next to each other because I don't want a big gap in between them. I do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm just going to take some paper tape and I cut off little pieces and cover the ends of my twine while my glue's still warm. I did go ahead and put a little more on that other end because it was cooling off. Now we're going to take some of our white chalk paint and paint over our tape and this just helps it blend into my wood so that I have a more finished backing. And there's our completed sign. I think this is so stinking cute. I loved the one at Hobby Lobby, but I like this one too. Now, I did not distress my edges, but you totally could if that's the look you want. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye, y'all!